and for answering the questions. Thank you very much. Okay, so our next presenter who will give us information on the repository for research data at TU Vienna is Tomasz Miksza. Tomasz is a researcher at the Institute of Information Systems Engineering and a staff member of the Center for Research Data Management at TU Vienna. Really, really look forward to your report and with that I will turn the floor over to you, Tomasz. Great, we can see your screen. Thank you very much. I guess you can see my screen. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to present on the behalf of my team, of our team. So on behalf of these four people you can see on the screen. Uh, I am the technical lead for the development of the repository, but people who are contributing on a daily basis to the project and who are really building the system are Max and, and Florian, our developers. And Barbara is our, our manager who is making sure we do things on time and she's our a person to negotiate with management uh, about all the, uh, let's say, non-technical issues like policy development, budget, and so on. So this is just to give you a feeling of how big the, the team is. And what I want to show you today is uh, how we are implementing Invenue RDM at Stewin. And in a nutshell, our system is meant for digital objects and for making them fair. And in this case, I'm saying digital objects and not data because we want to stay uh, generic with that. And we want to focus on research data, but basically also to um, accept any other submissions, for example, like deliverables from the uh, project, some presentations, that's also fine. The only difference is that we don't accept the publications, peer-reviewed publications, because our library at the Tewin has its own system called Repositum, and there they apply some um, uh, quality control process. So every researcher who publishes a, a publication must deposit to their system, and this is what we don't do, this is what we don't take. But basically everything else that doesn't fit to their system can go to our system. Uh, and we are uh, using this system from the end of the last year, so almost for a year. We have started very early, so at the beginning the set of functions was very limited. And during the year we are doing a lot of improvements, and in this presentation I'm going mostly to focus on what we were doing to roll out the system and not what the end users actually uh, can do. Uh, so one of the things we, we did in the meantime was customization of the landing page. This is actually, I guess, the first thing most of the universities want to do. Uh, we were making sure that it fits to the corporate design of the university and then uh, topics like accessibility came up and also the optimization for the, uh, for the mobiles. This is what we did. But one of the success stories that is uh, relatively fresh and we are very proud of is we are hosting currently uh, almost three terabytes data set. And you can see this data set on the right hand side. And uh, we have minted the DOI uh, for this data set. And on the left hand side, you can see um, an article published by Nature Scientific Data. And this is a data descriptor article. So this is a kind of an article in which researchers describe how they made their data fair and uh, they are they are basically showing off, look, we have collected great data, in this case, satellite images, and others can come and use it. And basically, our, our repository is referenced from this article, and our repository made it possible uh, to, to, to share this, this, this data. So uh, this is just to show that the state of the Invenio, RDM, and our repository is already good enough to, to serve such use cases, and we are able to take the responsibility of providing access to people from around the world to the data. A um, few words about rolling out the system. So the main difference, I guess, to the um, service running at the Teograts is that we have restricted access for now, for the time being, only to friendly users. So, in theory, every researcher of the Teruvin can uh, authenticate with their uh, account, but they won't be able to upload any files unless we enable that for them. And the reason for this is that we still are aware that the system may need some improvements. 
And these are slight things like phrasing used in the interface. So for example, when you're uploading, um, uh, uploading um, a file to the repository, you need to select a resource type. If it's a data set, if it's a notebook, if it's an image model. And uh, for example, we had to exclude publication from this list. And these are these enhancements we have to do before we uh, open it up to everyone at the Terubin. So we cannot just install an instance from Invenio RDM, the one that is shipped by CERN and say, we are done. These kind of customizations are needed and you're not able to spot all these uh, improvements in that, you know, uh, within a day or, or a week. Another thing is fine tuning the performance. So the success story I mentioned before uh, taught us a lesson that you know, when you roll out a system, uh, you test it with some PDFs, they download quickly because they are two, three megabytes big and that's okay. But when people started downloading 400 gigabytes, uh, then we noticed that they are getting timed out after some time and there's something going wrong. And it took us like two or three days to figure out what's going on. And now we are sure that our infrastructure can serve the files uh, to everyone and, and, and fast. Uh, and Again, since we had this limited amount of data sets in our repository, we had time to investigate that. We were not uh, deluged with a number of different, maybe very obvious or overlapping requests. Another topic is are the legal issues, and this is about clarifying who can actually move the data into the repository. We talked to different faculties, to different researchers, and we have identified some data sets where we could in theory, move the data set in the repository because from the technical point of view, it's all doable. But the problem was that the legal status was not clarified. And this was also something that helps us, helped us improve the communication with the researchers. When we are approaching the new researchers, we're telling them upfront, do you have a legal uh, permission to, to upload them so that we evade having data sets in the, in the, in the repository, which we might need to, may need to, to delete later. And the next thing is also about the monitoring. So having a system is not about installing it, but it's also about keeping it alive and responding to any incidents or, for example, when the system is down on uh, Saturday in the evening, uh, you know, who, 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 who puts it up and, and, and how do you deal with that? So these are the kind of things we've been testing within the last year. Um, some of other things we, we did is also the uh, extensive documentation of the system. So we need it for the internal use because the team I have shown you in the first slide are people who are, let's say, directly involved in the daily operations of the system. But we also have people who are uh, maintaining the servers and sometimes it's needed to also call for help from, from other departments of, of our university. And they always ask for, for documentation and also in case any of the team members would leave and someone new has to come as a replacement, they have to have a way to, 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 to get into the organization of the system. That's also important for the certification that we have in mind. Always, we, we think long term, we want to get certified at least a part of the, of the, of the repository. Uh, I would like to stress the importance of being the Invenio RDM uh, community. So we had here at the university, but I also have heard it at many different occasions, that management very often uh, is not so convinced about using open source software because the question is who can support it. Sometimes it's much easier to go to a specific company, pay them big amount of money, and then if something goes wrong, you can blame the company and you can basically buy support from them. And what happens is that this company may not always have the expertise to support you, but you're covered because you paid for that. But by the end of the day, you want to solve the problems. And the best way to solve the problems is to be well connected to people who are, who are actually developing the, the Invenio RDM. And our developers are contributing to the project. And on the one hand, they know themselves best how the system works, so they can find the problems much quicker. Second, if they, uh, if they join the discussions in the chat and if they ask they have a problem and they have a good standing of contributing to the project, it's more likely they will get support from, from other, uh, from other uh, developers. So as I have the second quotation from friends, from Joey Tribbiani, it is based on giving and receiving and as well as having and sharing. 
So I would say that this project in Venue RDM is not too big. It's not like you have hundreds of developers contributing, but actually everyone is contributing two hours a month, and this is not really a contribution. You have a team of few dedicated people, and if you become a member of this group, it makes things much easier. So if you're considering having your repository, make sure you have your developers that can contribute in the development of some of the features, because then this is the best way for them to learn the, the system and the best way to, to learn the community. And as a conclusion, some next steps. So the next big feature that we are currently working on, so basically Max is working on, uh, are the communities. And this is something, this is a feature we are looking forward to because this will give us a chance to separate the parts of the repository for the, uh, let's say, catch all uh, where people can upload whatever they want and the certified um, uh, part of the repository, which will be a community of, of curated uh, documents. We want to open the system to the Theravind researchers within the course of the next year. This depends on the discussions about the infrastructure and budget, and we also need some. We also need a policy document in which the, the, the mission statement is explicit, because setting up a repository is not only a technical challenge, it's the organizational, political, and so on. And I think this is, this is really the, 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 the key uh, uh, point here. And we are also planning to do some integrations next year, so with the Aconet Federation to enable authentication for people outside of the Tailwind so that they can also access, for example, restricted documents and, and, and shared by link documents. And uh, we also want to integrate with the DAMAP tool. This is a tool we are developing for machine actionable DMPs. This is also planned for the next year. That's it from my side. Thank you very much for the invitation to speak in the, in the webinar. Thank you very much, Tomasz. Um, when you look at the chat, there's um, a ver very good comment on your presentation. <laughs> and also some questions are in it, uh, just for the context that you know, um, I will read it out. Um, you mentioned you had to do some customizations to the out-of-the-box in Vino RDM, which makes sense. How much of these customizations have been contributed back to the Invenio RDM code base? Um, so it's clear that we haven't contributed the customization on the user interface because this is uh, clearly specific uh, to us. Although some of the things that um, Florian identified that are not optimal for accessibility have to be changed in the main code base. And these are the things where, where he got the green light, okay, if this is a, this is a problem, we can of course uh, accept it. We are always doing everything not to break the backwards compatibility because if we make a fork from the main code base, we are there on our own. And all the customizations we had to do, for example, this controlled vocabularies, like selecting the resource types, this is just editing one of the JSON files, and this is something you can do on your instance, and you don't break the, the compatibility. So um, I don't recall any big features we implemented that we then that we needed and that we had to bring back. It was rather that uh, we went to the Invenio RDM community and we told Lars, "Hey Lars, we would need this. When can we get that feature?" And and and, and Lars was telling us. If you are willing to work on this during the next sprint, so for example, like the communities were our top priority, we can assign your developers to this. So right now we are co-developing the communities. It will be part of the, of the main code base. And basically by putting our resources, we expect to have this feature faster than if we did it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And is it easy to maintain customizations? What would you say? Uh, Yes, yes, because there, there, is a, there is a nice separation of the, so the, the, the system has been designed from scratch using the modern frameworks and technologies. So it's not a monolith, it consists of microservices and it's relatively easy to isolate specific functionalities. And the front end, so the, the visual part is separated from the back end, so where the operations happen. So it's very easy to isolate what you need to improve and to draw the boundary between the parts. Okay, great. Thank you, Tomasz. I 
think that that were the questions that came up. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.